Tactics Ogre is a game my viewers have been requesting me to cover for a long time now, and it has been high on my list to play. I'm a massive fan of Yasumi Matsuno games, and that fact has left many baffled as to why I haven't gotten around to playing it yet. Thankfully, Square Enix reached out to me and offered a review copy of Tactics Ogre Reborn, the latest remaster of the game launching on November 11th, just a few weeks from now. Today, I'm only allowed to give impressions and show footage from the first chapter, so this won't be much of an in-depth analysis. More of an announcement that I'm finally getting around to playing this, and that so far, I'm absolutely loving this version. I'm sure a big reason for this is because Yatsumi Matsuno himself was heavily involved with the development of this remaster, so you can be assured it is well polished on all accounts. Since I haven't played the original game or the PSP remaster, I'm probably not the best person to give impressions on changes between this and previous iterations. That being said, I've taken some time to look at the PS1 version and get an idea of how much the script has changed, and just like Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions, the dialogue has been majorly overhauled to adopt more of a Shakespearean flair. This of course was true of the PSP version, so if that's the version you're familiar with, it's more or less the same as what you saw there. Some people will undoubtedly not love this style of dialogue, but for me, I can't get enough of it. I adore medieval fantasy games written in this fashion. As for other changes made from the PSP version, some include high-definition characters and backgrounds, a fully updated user interface, which is really intuitive and well-designed in my opinion, Remastered sound effects, all of which are great so far. Fully voice acted dialogue in both Japanese and English, which isn't amazing or anything, but it's also not offensively bad and can be turned off if you don't like it. And I am Canopus, the one they name Windcaller. Our aged companion here is the Starseer, Warren Oman, at your service. Mirden Warhorn. A knight of Zenobia, as it please you. Gildis is my name. There now, no need to be frightened. I wasn't. I, I don't... I don't know what to say. Forgive us, good knights. But perhaps this meeting might benefit us both. We have need of strength such as yours. And, and this is the big one for me, a fully re-recorded soundtrack with a live orchestra by Hitoshi Sakimoto, who wrote the original OST. And it sounds really good. I've loved all of the music so far, and apparently, Sakimoto has even written a few entirely new pieces just for this remaster, which is really exciting as well. As for more fundamental changes to the core experience, the battle system has been redesigned. There is a unit-by-unit -unit leveling system now, replacing the class-wide level management system from the PSP version. Battle AI has been overhauled, and several playability improvements have been added, such as autosave, a fast-forward feature, and control improvements. You also have the option to use what's called a Chariot Tarot, which allows you to return to previous turns and replay battles from that point. This alternate version of events, though, is stored separately from the original, so you're free to choose the more favorable course of the two if you want. While I wish I could comment on how these changes improve or maybe even damage the original experience, uh, for now, all I can say is that I enjoy all of these features. I would think that it makes the game more accessible than ever before. To give you an idea of where I'm at, I've completed the tutorial battles, which are more or less impossible to lose, and two additional battles at Tynemouth Hill and Chrysaro. Both were really easy, as is to be expected from Chapter 1 battles of tactical RPGs of this kind. For that reason, I don't have much to say about the gameplay at this point, other than it's smooth, responsive, and fast. Menus, as I said earlier, are intuitive and simple to navigate, battle effects are flashy and mesh quite well with the sprite work, 
and the speed up feature is wonderful. There are a good number of classes to experiment with so far, but being capped at level 5 hasn't given me much of an opportunity to unlock new skills. There's really not much more to say at this point, other than the game is very well polished. I've been very critical of Square Enix's remasters in the past, and particularly so of PC ports of their classic titles like Chrono Trigger. And this game bears none of the signs of the problems I had come to expect from this company. I'm certain this is due to the involvement of the original director on this project, and the effort that has gone into this is really showing. I'm having a blast with it so far, and I can't wait to give more complete thoughts when the game launches on November 11th. This is certainly a game that's on my radar not only to cover on our podcast, but also as a retrospective at some point in the future. For what I've seen and played so far, I give it a huge thumbs up. Definitely look into this. Look for some more impressions from other channels since the embargo for Chapter 1 just got lifted today. And rest assured, they've done really good work here. Thanks for watching. If you have any further questions of me, I will be in the comments for a little bit this afternoon and I'll try to do my best to answer what I can. We'll see you again real soon.